Welcome, my name is Carl Dannenberger, and the topic of this presentation is the Heathland era and the coming of age of golf course architecture. Heathland refers to an area south and west of London, England, where the terrain is gently rolling. The vegetation is primarily heather, rhododendrons, scotch firs, and pine trees. The plants and trees mentioned grow well on acid soils. Besides the acidic soil conditions, the soil profiles are primarily sandy, similar in many ways to lynx land. The soils are favorable for good drainage and the growth of fescue grasses. In stark contrast to some of the inland areas of Scotland and England, where golf courses had failed due to poor design and environmental conditions. The Heathland era denoted the beginnings of golf course architecture as a profession. A few of the architects of this time are discussed further. Willie Park Jr., an accomplished golf course architect of the time, was the son of Willie Park Sr., who was an accomplished golfer. Willie Park Sr., shown here in this picture, won the first British Open in 1860 over Old Tom Morris. He went on to win three more Opens in 1863, 1866, and 1875. Willie Park Sr. helped increase golf's popularity with challenge matches against the likes of Old Tom Morris, Willie Dunn, and Alan Robertson. Willie Park Jr. was an accomplished golfer in his own right, winning the Open in 1887 and 1889. He was an accomplished putter, which was good because he did not strike the ball particularly well. He wrote his first book on golf, entitled the Game of Golf in 1896. The book outlines his design philosophy, which includes starting with some easy holes, having all hazards visible, and allowing for the ability to run a ball up to the green if so desired. He also wrote the book entitled The Art of Putting in 1920. The value of this book in the hardcover original edition runs from $600 to $1,500. Willie Park Jr. ran the family golf club making business and with golf expanding started an export business of golf equipment. He also got involved with golf course design with a reported 170 golf course designs to his credit. He did three courses in the Heathland era that were notable. Hunter Comby, Sunningdale, and Knott's. Hunter Comby and Sunningdale I will mention further. This photograph is the 8th green, which shows the slope that Willie Park would put into some of his greens, and also the concept of strategic shot making that it would require. To get the ball back to the pin placement on this 3 to 4 foot high plateau on the back of the green would normally require a pitch and run. To fly it back there would be almost impossible, except for the best golfers. Willie Park Jr. also installed grass bunkers or natural bunkers that had not been done before. This is the fourth hole at Hunter Combi. Willie Park Jr. also designed the old course of Sunningdale in 1900. I just want to show a few pictures of Sunningdale. I wouldn't mention at this point, besides the old course by Willie Park Jr., Sunningdale also has a new course designed by Harry S. Colt in 1923. The pictures I show in the subsequent pictures are of both the old and new course. Notice the terrain, the trees, firs, and pines, and the heather throughout the course. Again, as shown here in this picture. and this one too. Harry Shaplin Colt, or H.S. Colt, is the father of British golf course architecture. He originally studied law at Cambridge University where he was also on the golf team. He became secretary of Sunningdale from 1901 to 1913. 
His first layout was the Rye Golf Club in East Sussex, England, which is just outside of London. Similar to his later design at Swinley Forest Golf Club, both these courses fit into Colt's idea that a course should blend into its natural surroundings. A unique characteristic of the courses is that both do not have a true par 5. The courses measure around 6,000 to 6,300 yards. At Swinley Forest, Colt laid out the par 3s and then the par 4s. It has been said the mixture of par 3 holes along with the long and short par 4 holes give the course a type of natural rhythm or flow. Colt's courses usually reflect a mastery of scale, small greens at the end of a narrow winding fairway, tees set back behind modest stretches of rough. This is the new course at Sunningdale that Colt designed. H.S. Colt would train and mentor a number of golf course architects who would become famous in their own right. C.H. Allison would serve as a partner for Colt for more than 20 years. In this case, Alistair McKenzie got his start with Colt and remained with him for a fairly short period of time. This document is a proposal that was sent to a golf course by the team of Colt, McKenzie, and Allison. Some of the firsts associated with Colt include being the first architect that was not a professional golfer, using drawing boards, and preparing tree planting plans for his golf courses. Another architect of the time was William Herbert Fowler, who was an accomplished cricket player who started to play golf later in his career and became quite competent, competing in the open. He was a rather an eccentric golfer, as one person described as one who putts sometimes with a driving iron, but often uses a mallet, which looks like a sandwich box with a stick stuck through the middle. He is famous for design Walton Heath, which is shown here in the early 1900s. The course opened to high acclaim, actually more than Sunningdale at the time. He too believed that a golf course should be natural and follow the lay of the land. Here is another picture of Walton Heath, which shows its natural beauty and how well it fits into the landscape. Fowler was not a famous architect, but he captured many of the traits of the architects during this Heathland era. Although this picture of the 18th hole of Pebble Beach does not quite fit this presentation, I show it because if it was not for Herbert Fowler, it would still be a 379-yard par 4 not the famous par 5 of today.